So I'm going to be talking about uh, Enterprise Media Wiki, the uh, the state of the ecosystem, and it's it's sort of a um, uh, it'll be sort of a hybrid of talking about um, uh, you know Enterprise Media Wiki in a general sense, and then the state, meaning most recent addition, uh, changes and features and so forth. Um, so uh, briefly about me, I live in New Jersey. I'm a MediaWiki and Enterprise MediaWiki entrepreneur and consultant. Uh, I have a company called WikiWorks. Uh, I wrote a book called Working with MediaWiki, which I still maintain. Uh, and I host a podcast called Between the, Brock Between the Brackets, which uh, many of the people here have actually been on and, uh, and the ones who haven't will hopefully be on in the future. Uh, and generally a, an evangelist for whatever that's worth. Um, what is Enterprise Media Wiki? It's basically any use of Media Wiki outside of Wikimedia sites. Um, although the word enterprise has has connotations of uh, of you know corporate stuff, companies and organizations. So that's really where the heart of it is, as opposed to you know people just running their own personal wikis. It also sort of refers to a set of extensions and skins that are widely used. Uh, a lot of which have already been discussed. Uh, in in a few talks, and uh, uh, we'll probably get discussed more in the future at, at this conference. Um, uh, most of them are not used on Wikimedia sites, although some are, and there's sort of a gray area, I guess, about what 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 it means to be enterprise media wiki. More philosophically, it's the whole concept of media wiki as a database, which has definitely been covered here. Um, so let's talk about some extensions. Um, Page forms uh, started in 2007. It, it was known as semantic forms until uh, five years ago. Uh, and probably most people here have heard of it at least. I'm not gonna really explain it uh, other than to say that it lets you define forms for uh, creating and editing pages that have uh, template calls that are info box style, like the kind you see on Wikipedia. Um, uh, so that's that's my explanation of page forms. Um, the big change in the last year uh, was the addition of these parser functions called template params and template display, um, which actually don't have to do with forms directly. They have to do with just making it easier to create templates um, in a structured way, which the forms can then also use. But um, uh, it, it just makes the whole thing more structured, more uh, more programmatic, I guess. These are optional, and I'll show an example. Also, there was a move to uh, to, to make a lot more use of um, OOUI, which is a JavaScript library that's built in within MediaWiki now. Um, so that's changed the look and feel to some extent. Um, so here is an example of what a template can look like now. You'll notice there's there's no text here. There's no um, there's no uh, wiki text in terms of um, formatting a table or that kind of thing. It's just um, just for calls and and two of them are for cargo, which I'll get to uh, later. So if you're not using cargo, you can ignore those. the The basic thing is is template params and template display. Uh, template params defines the uh, the set of parameters that this template expects. Template display handles displaying them based on what's defined there. Um, and uh, that takes care of, of all of the display stuff, both when you go to a template page and then when you go to a page that calls that template. Um, so, I mean, th this is the kind of thing that I, that I, I would like of the code to move toward is just making it as simple as possible. You know, define it, define everything just once, and uh, then use it elsewhere. Um, uh, there's a slight uh, duplication here where both template, the template and cargo, define the uh, fields in different ways. But um, overall, this is pretty efficient. Um, so I won't show, I won't show what this does, but it basically, you know, defines a template <laughs> if you know about infobox style templates. Um, 
OOUI uh, has changed the look and feel of auto completion a little. Here's an example. Uh, this was done last year. Here's an example of, of how auto completion is different now, and the buttons are, are look different also. This is for form input. Um, when you first go to uh, uh, to use a form, uh, and here the the the, uh, the the bottom of forms has changed also to match the changes in uh, the MediaWiki edit page. All right, so that's it for page forms. Um, external data is another uh, extension. It started in 2009. Uh, it, it was mentioned before, but it, it lets you display data from outside sources, basically. Um, so if there's an API uh, or a database or text file, et cetera, that you want to query and display, but you don't actually want to move that data into the wiki, uh, external data lets you do that. Um, so this, sorry, this is this this is kind of a big slide, but um, uh, most of the credit for these for the changes from the last year uh, go to a guy named Alexander Machine. Um, uh, Scribunto support was added last year, so uh, so all of this stuff you can do from within a Lua module now, as opposed to just calling from Wikitext. Uh, and then very recently, a new version 3.0 came out. Uh, there are a bunch of changes in there. Uh, one big one is the addition of, of a new uh, function, get program data, and there's also a Lua equivalent to that, uh, which lets you call a program on the server, which, you know, if you, hopefully you know what you're doing uh, when you do that. And, and you, you, you know, the security is there. You can't just arbitrarily call programs, but um, if you set it up, you can call something like who is or any, any other server side script uh, even graphing tools like GraphViz. Uh, so there are a lot of extensions, uh, MediaWiki extensions that let you um, call, you, you know, that 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 call um, scripts on the server side. So the, this potentially replaces the need for those. Um, and then you can use the the output from that either just to display as text or actually to display as an image or whatever it is. Um, uh, there's a new INI format. Instead of uh, the current ones, there's there's five or so supported formats already. Uh, the big ones are XML, JSON, and CSV. So now there's also this INI format. If you have like local settings.php is an example of a of a file. Actually, not entirely because of the semicolons, but there are. But any any standard .ini file will have key value pairs like that. Um, you can retrieve just a subset. I should have put CSV in there too, I think. But you can basically just retrieve a subset of a file instead of the whole thing, which is a pretty neat feature. There's a, there's a few others, but that, those are the main ones. Um, Cargo uh, is an extension uh, I created in 2014. It lets you store info box style template values uh, in database tables uh, instead of in a, in a graph, I guess you could say, like Semantic Media Wiki. Uh, and query the data. It is fairly similar to Semantic Media Wiki. It's definitely faster, uh, arguably easier to use, arguably better maintained. Uh, some may disagree on that one. Uh, it does lack uh, linked data support, uh, so you can't do a Sparkle query on it. It's, it's just a, it's a syntax that's essentially equivalent to SQL, and you can actually call SQL queries directly on the database backend if you want. Um, there's a bunch of things that have been added to Cargo. Um, there are two uh, two new result formats that are that I think are important: BPM and Gantt. Those are two uh, ways to display um, uh, projects project management style information. I guess you could say. Um, so here you can see an example of a of a BPM format. Uh, that's done via query, and and it's pretty neat. There's uh, there's a, a this code that automatically does the layout uh, of uh, this. So you don't need to worry about like you know putting figuring out the the right x and y coordinates for everything on the graph. Um, so that that's a that's the, those are quite recent features, and I hope they'll be used uh, in the future. Um, Approved revs is another 
a popular extension. It lets you mark a certain revision of a page uh, or a file as approved. So that's the one that gets shown to users. Um, it's a it's a more humane, I guess you could say, or wiki style approach than just saying, you know, this is important information, so only administrators are allowed to edit this page or something, something like that. And you know, theory theoretically, anyone can edit any page. You just have protections, not even not well, protections not quite the right word, but um, you have this extra <clears throat> layer of approval to make sure that uh, anything gets. Uh, uh, gets monitored before people actually see it. Uh, it's an, there are other extensions that do the same thing. It's an alternative to flagged revs. It certainly is easier to use and better maintained than that one, even though that's the, the, the standard Wikimedia one. Uh, that's all, all but abandoned at this point. There's another one uh, called moderation that, that some people uh, like. So um, that's a more reasonable alternative to approved revs. Um, approved graphs has had some changes too. Uh, there's these new variables, uh, five of them, to uh, let you view information about a page. How? Whoa. Okay. Sorry, I'm just uh, just checking here to see if I'm still online. And yeah. Okay. Um, uh, so. Uh, so yeah, you can either put those directly on a page uh, to just so it can it can display you know this this page was approved by a user named you know approval user, uh, or you can call it uh, to get the information on some other page. Um, so it's really two in one. It's their variables and parser functions, although they look pretty similar. Uh, there's also better support for files now. So there's this new. Um, setting uh there was a setting called blank if unapproved to show a blank page if uh it, 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 to, to make any page blank that doesn't have an approved uh, revision for extra security now you can do the same thing with uh, files like images uh page exchange is just a new extension in general uh uh released last year uh, it lets you define um, packages of wiki pages uh, that you can then, that other people can then install and update and so forth on their wikis, provided they have um, page exchange installed. So you can do it for all, you can use it for all kinds of things, data structures, Lua modules, you can even do, uh, do it for, uh, for CSS and JavaScript uh, files. Uh, the, and uh, here's an example of what it looks like if you have page exchanges ins installed. You, there's some uh, there's some website where somebody has put a, a, a JSON file holding the entire set of pages that uh, uh, that that comprise that package, and then you can just click the install button. It explains what it is and, and all the pages that you'll get. If it's if it seems fine to you, you just click the install button, and then it's there on your wiki. Uh, and then if there's a new version of that package, you can you can update it. There'll be a button that says update instead and one that says remove. So you can also just remove it easily. Um, Flex diagrams, another just extension that's fairly new, also released last year. Uh, it's a non, non semantic, <laughs> uh, small s semantic, non, uh, uh, you know, uh, Non, non semantic, non cargo, I guess you could say, way of uh, editing and displaying diagrams. And here's an example of a Gantt chart. Uh, you can see, the, uh, I just have this one screenshot, but uh, for this uh, presentation, but you can see this is, uh, you, you get to this interface by clicking the edit diagram tab. If you click the edit tab, it would just show the wiki text, uh, I guess, I think XML. Either XML or JSON for uh, for Gantt, but here there's a graphical interface to let you create a Gantt chart, and then the display of the page would look like this, but without the uh, editing interface. Um, so there's a bunch of other uh, standard extensions as well that I at least consider Enterprise Media Wiki, and I listed some of them here. This is obviously always going always going to be a subset. Um, 
I don't know how much to get into any of these. I'm sure people have heard of a, 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 at least some of these. Um, the header tab slash tabber slash tabs one is interesting. There are three competing extensions and to display tabs within a page, and I guess none of them are perfect. Uh, so hopefully we'll reach some conclusion on that, either be able to improve one of them to be the definitive tab extension or something. Um, um, but uh, uh, there definitely is standardization going on. I mean, for example, Cirrus search used to be one of uh, three or or maybe more uh, search extensions, uh, you know, beyond just MediaWiki's built-in search. But at this point, it's it's pretty much the only approach to take. Um, yeah, so that's it. And, and sorry if I left out any that uh, that you like. There, there's uh, dozens uh, that could have gone into this list. Um, Wikibase is an interesting case. Is it Enterprise Media Wiki? I don't know. It's a, it's an extension that helps make your wiki unusable, and it's also used to power wiki data. I'm of course being uh, comical here, but I, I do believe that that's true. I haven't seen. An example of a wiki-based based extension out, uh, based wiki outside of Wikidata that's actually usable by regular users and is actually you know edited by a by any kind of community of editors. Um, but I look forward to uh, hearing if anybody disagrees with that. Um, <clears throat> I mean, yeah. I mean, there are people making use of it, and there I know there are consultants who help uh, people set up Wikibase on their wikis, and and that's fine if people want to do that. I just uh, I think it's a waste of time um, compared to using either Semantic Media Wiki or Cargo. Uh, some skins. Uh, the, I mean, this is less important, but there certainly are skins that have become popular outside of the Wikimedia-based sites. Generally, these are these are responsive skins, aka ones that work equally well on a phone or a desktop. Um, Chameleon Refresh Timeless is is the is the Wikimedia Foundation's responsive skin. It's a good one, uh, but the others are good too. Lots of people still use Vector. And if you are using Vector, I'd, I'd recommend the mobile front end extension, uh, so you so you have a a, a nice mobile uh, option, mobile display for people going to it from their phone, and you can see that on Wikipedia. Uh, and that's it. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if I have any time now, but I'd, I'm uh, happy to take. Uh, Questions. Okay, <clears throat> Miro, <clears throat> I see a uh, I see a question from Alexander. Do you have any plans to move code from Gert and friends to GitLab or GitHub to address more contributors? Yeah, I think that well, somebody just answered that. Yeah, I mean, I'll uh, I, no, but I assume my extensions will be moving. Just like everybody else's extensions will. All right. Uh, well, that was so, easy. I then I have a question on your own. How do you, how how would you feel about uh, modifying a page form so that it can, uh, it can uh, uh, use other slots? So you are when you hit save, then the uh, template call goes in the in the main slot. It would be great if 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 we can define some other slot to put uh, to put uh, the information in. How do you feel about that? I I don't really understand it, uh, but then I don't really understand the whole multi-content revisions thing to begin with. Um, but maybe you can explain it to me at some point, or maybe now. If, I don't know. In the two <laughs> minutes we have left, um, well, uh, perhaps um, the next presentation. Let's. Um, which one is the next? I think. Yeah, I think Victor is the next. 
So he's going to, uh, I think he's going to elaborate on that. So I, I would say after that, if you uh, have questions, but I think for for a lot of uh, for a lot of uh, people that would be great. Okay, cool. Oh, now there's questions coming in. Okay. Uh, okay. Br uh, briefly, um, uh, yeah, uh, there's a request for a, for another. Uh, diagram format for flex diagrams. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'd hope to be adding more uh, at some point. Uh, visual editor plus template data is an interesting one. Uh, visual editor lets you actually e edit Infobox uh, templates in a structured way. And it certainly is useful when you don't have forms. And sometimes it's uh, useful even when you do have page forms installed. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that if you want to use that for for whatever data i mean the more structure the better is just my view in general so um so whenever you can actually create a structure and impose it i think that's the way to go uh, uh and the last question um thoughts on semantic media wiki versus cargo i mean uh i i have my own thoughts on that I, on the cargo um page on mediawiki.org there's a there's a sub page that talks about uh, the differences between them and uh, and and there's a separate subpage I think two different ones uh, a separate one that talks about how it's possible to, to uh, transfer queries from one to the other uh, and there's no reason not you, that you couldn't use both uh, at the same time also some people do that uh, add I think <laughs> you use both so um, clearly it's it's doable. Definitely. Uh, and, oh, and, okay. Oh, I'm, I'm glad. Well, okay. And now I'm really running out of time, but uh, the, un the unsuitability of Wikibase. Um, yeah. I mean, um, um, I mean, the, there's a few things. The big thing, there's, well, there's two big things with Wikibase. One is the, the, the lack of forms, I guess you could say, the lack of support for um, structured entry of data. So you basically have to know what the properties, allowed properties are for each type of page. Um, and uh, that's a problem on Wikidata as well. There's a ton of uh, noise, I guess you could say, on Wikidata and people applying properties in different ways and values in different ways on different pages. Um, uh, and the other big thing with Wikibase is the lack of inline queries. You can't query the data on the wiki uh, you have to do it outside with Sparkle and then whatever other tools if you, if you want to do visualizations of it. Um, uh, yeah, I guess the other stuff is common. So, okay. Okay. Thanks.